Hey everyone, Marty Snyder, Jeff Burton, Steve Latart joining you after Denny Hamlin's win. And uh, I don't know, guys, I didn't think I would have Pocono as the cauldron of hate, which it certainly has become lately. So let's see, we had Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson. We had Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick. After the race, we had Ryan Priest and Corey LaJoy. And then something with Ty Dillon and Chase Briscoe as well. Steve, I mean, I don't know what happened at Pocono, but it went bonkers, didn't it? And I don't know why Austin Dillon is mad. You guys in the booth were trying to figure out was he in the right to be mad at Tyler Reddick? So I think what you're seeing, Marty, in my opinion, is the deepest 36 car field we've ever seen, right? When you think of Rick Ware Racing or Spire or some of these smaller teams that have been building, they're now here. They're on the scene. They're in the field, right? And for that reason, every inch, every mistake is multiplied. The Hamlin Larson for the win, uh, we've had disagreements for the win forever. That's not going to go away. But to your point, Ty Dillon just, shipped chase briscoe i'm not sure why i'm confident there's more to the story than we know uh and then the austin dillon tyler reddick one jeff i want to feel bad for austin dillon because this is a huge hit but this didn't just happen like the 45 was kind of inside the three for quite a while down the front stretch i i just don't see this as a helmet throw type incident yeah, I was I was confused about it as well. I, I I think that you know I've said this many times when a driver gets in a wreck, you know, you almost can't listen to what they say because many times, you know, you don't really one hundred percent know what happened. Uh, the only thing that I can see is that Austin believed there would be more space that that Reddick would turn sooner than he turned. Uh, but if you look at you know how much space there is between Austin and the car on out outside of him, uh, there was a ton of space there and. It just seems like to me that that Austin misjudged that. Obviously, when he did that, he didn't think he was misjudging it, but he's below the cars that are in front of him entering the corner, and they weren't side by side. So when I, that's kind of my reference, right? Clearly, Reddick is below those cars, and Austin's trying to be below those cars, and they're running the line they want to run. Austin needed to, he, you know, give a little more space, in my opinion. Uh, but you know, look, man, the, you you said it. Every position matters. Uh, the competition is so hard right now. Cars, we watched it. Cars that were running 20th, when they got clean air, they were running top five speeds. And, you know, when it's that competitive, it's really hard to pass. It's frustrating. It's hard to make things get, get done. And Austin's had a tough – he's had a, a miserable year. And, and uh, all that stuff, you know, in my opinion, contributed to his anger. So I want to touch on that, Jeff, because often is there more involved – when a driver's angry like that, like you had the incident with Jeff Gordon and afterwards you're like, ah, I probably shouldn't have reacted that way. You know, Austin got wrecked by Austin Cindric at, at gateway a couple of weeks ago, another big wreck here. And with, you know, his former teammate is some of that the, the whole year, all of that piled into the anger that comes out after a wreck like that. Well, I, listen, it has to be right. I mean, Austin Dillon is an exceptionally competitive guy and he's working I mean, he's working really hard. You think about what he's done to become a better road race uh, driver. He's putting a lot of effort into taking his driving skill to the next level, the team to the next level. He's, he's all in. He's pushed all the chips in the center of the table. He's all in. And he's just having this year that is nowhere near his expectation level. And they had the big penalty. Uh, you, you know, you can't, the penalty is so big, you can't overcome it. And the only way to overcome it is to get a win. And, and when you're back there racing and you know you can't win, you know you're out of the playoffs, it's really frustrating. So, yeah, I, I think all that contributed to his anger. There's no question in my mind. Well, I don't think it's just for Austin Dillon either, right? We, there's this video of Ryan Priest confronting Corey LaJoy after the race. Well, let's go back a week ago. Corey, you know, Ryan Priest gets cannonballed by Michael McDowell, right? So here's the video. Priest gets out very upset, comes back, and I'll call it a – discussion there might be more than that going on hard to tell right but you know look there's one week off these guys start traveling in february and we see groups of cars that race each other a lot and what i mean by that is it's a lot of the denny hamlin kyle larson conversation they race each other a lot well ryan priest and corla joy find themselves near each other on the racetrack a lot they have similar speed many many weeks so it's kind of you know, a million little paper cuts finally boils over and you're just so irritated. And I think that's getting to this point of the season, like Ryan Priest, Stuart Haas Racing, not having the year they want. We saw Ty Dillon wreck Chase Briscoe. 
Ty Dillon's had a rough year. He was having a very good Pocono. So, right, did he think that was his day and something pushed him over the edge? I think that's the story is, you know, each of these races, why they are standalone events, it's the totality of the season. And much like a hockey fight, you might have to go all the way back to the first period to see why somebody's dropping the gloves. What I've learned with race car drivers, even the ones I crew chiefed for that I watched every single lap, sometimes after the race, I have to go, so, so what happened there? Like, why did we, why did that really go that way? And and Jeff Gordon was the best because he would tell you, well, you know, 15 weeks ago, this guy did. And I'm like, 15 weeks ago. Okay. All right. Well, you know, yeah. they just don't forget. Well, Steve, so you're the team leader. What do you do this week if you're Ryan Priest's crew chief or or you're Keith Rodden with Austin Dillon? How do you simmer all this down and get focused for the final five races of the regular season? Well, it's a hard conversation, but you have to ask yourself, what could we do different? We can't change Tyler Reddick's move if we're Austin Dillon. You know, you, if you're Ryan Priest and you feel that Corla Joy spun you out in the tunnel, as I assume the conversation's going to go, why are we back there? Why did we get spun out? I thought Daniel Swartz had one of the best interviews I've seen in a while. He gets wrecked. He loses points on a restart. But instead of pointing fingers, instead of placing blame, he had some reflection of his team. And he said, well, we qualified bad. We had a bad first run. We lost track position. We shouldn't be back there, I think he said, with the squirrels. That's good self-reflection. That's a team that will improve because they are saying, what did we do to be back here? So if you're Austin Dillon, it's easy to say, well, Tyler Reddick did this. Well, Okay, that's fine. But what can we do different next week? I like the anger. I like the emotion. But to your point, Marty, we have to funnel it to the good, right? Because emotion is really bad when it comes to performance, right? Everybody wants to try harder. Trying harder never seems to work. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.